Recently, I did a video where I cooked a brisket on the workhorse. I rested it overnight at 170, and it was overcooked. And I said, I don't know if you can rest this at 170. I don't think so. Many people in the comments said, yes, you can. Here's the mistakes you made. So today, we're doing it again. Let's get into it. What's up, barbecue fans? Walk by the patio. My name's Jake. You're watching Rama Cook. Today on the channel, we got the workhorse out. Again, we're doing brisket once again. And I'm trying to figure out, can I hold this at 170? So let me tell you the story behind the cook. Maybe a month ago, I did a cook on my Yoder pellet grill. I called it the number one brisket because I used the Goldie's method and I did a rest overnight about 155. You guys blew up my comments and said, hey, my oven only goes down to 170. So I'm like, all right, what can we do here? So I did a brisket on the workhorse. I held it overnight at 170. And for me, it turned out overcooked. So I didn't think you could do it. You guys straighten me out. In the comments, you left a whole bunch of things saying, hey, I've done this many times and it worked out for me. I think you made these mistakes. So today I'm redoing that just for you. I'm gonna take another one for the team and hopefully at the end of this video, I'll be able to give you the ability to rest it at 170. If not, I'm still working on some options that are not breaking the bank for 150. Bear with me because I've got a couple things going on, but I am trying to figure that out for you. Let me bring you up to speed with how we got here today. Seven and a half hours ago, I broke out my pepper cannon. I made myself three tablespoons of pepper, one and a half tablespoons of salt. Then I grabbed my brisket. This guy is from Costco. It is a choice, 15 and a half pounds. We opened up with the package. I started trimming the bottom and we took off all that silver skin. Now this brisket actually wasn't in too bad a shape, so I was able to trim up the bottom relatively quickly, and I took off one side of it, we flipped it over, and the mohawk was actually not too pronounced, so I actually trimmed around it because the fat cap was very, very narrow all the way around it. There was a couple spots where it was thick, and I worked through those to try and get it to that quarter inch, uh, but the mohawk kind of tricked me up a little bit here because it wasn't super pronounced, but it had a whole bunch of, uh, of that slimy fat. So I actually, what I did is I seasoned the bottom of it with my salt and pepper. And then as I flipped it over, I looked at it one more time and I was like, I don't know, I think I gotta take some of that off. So I took a little bit of the Mohawk off, made sure it was aerodynamic. And then I put a heavy coating of salt and pepper on there. And we're about two parts pepper, one part salt let it rest for about 15 minutes. Then we came outside and fired up the pit. And after about 45 minutes, I threw the brisket on. We had the point facing the fire and I just let it roll. And that was you know, seven hours ago. I have sprayed it twice with water and apple cider vinegar uh, about 30 minutes ago and an hour before that. So I really, I let it roll for uh, about five hours before I even touched it. Let me bring you in, show you how we're looking. So as you can see, we're not looking too bad. We're getting a little dark here. Give that a little spray. Just a little crunchy in there. Not too bad, we still got lots of time left. But so far we're looking pretty good. The bark's looking nice. So I let that roll at 225 for the first six hours and then I bumped it up to 250. We're gonna roll there for a little while longer then I'm gonna jump it up to 275. I'll bring you back for a look in a couple hours. We're gonna go again, probably up to about 190. Not gonna wrap it. And then I'm gonna change it up a little bit, but I'll bring it back when we get close to those steps. So here we are, many hours later, we're gonna pull out our brisket, which is sitting around 190. And one of the things people said is that because I wrapped it in foil, it carried over too much. We're gonna wrap it in paper. A little beautiful. And here we are, beautiful looking brisket. We're gonna put the flat right on top of that tallow and let's see where we're at. All right, so you can see we're 185 here. Back here, we're 190, 192, 188. So I think we're in good shape. We're gonna pull it off and just wrap it. And now we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it cool down. Pull that back and we're gonna give this a good tuck. Fat cap down. Fat cap up, 
fold this up. One more fold. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this rest for probably two hours at this point. I'm gonna get it down to about 160. My oven is set at 170 again, so I wanna get this below that temp so we can stop the cooking process and then we'll let it rest overnight, probably for about 12 hours and I'll see you in the morning. So here we are 14 hours later. Now I tested this this morning and it was at 169. So we held it right around 170 all night long. Now what I did do is I let it get down to 160 before I put it in the oven. So that way I knew I was under the temperature. I had stopped the cooking, took, uh, I don't know, an hour and a half or so. And uh, then I just put it on a rack like so in the oven and went to bed because it was 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> So real quick, on my channel, I do a contest every video. You can win a $25 gift card to appbbq.com. Super easy, all you gotta do is you gotta be subscribed to the channel, you gotta like the video, and you gotta use two unique hashtags per video. For this video, we, we will do hashtag Texas, hashtag brisket, and leave a comment down below. Next video, I will use a random comment picker, and if I draw your name and comment with those hashtags, you'll win a $25 gift card to appbq.com. If you happen to be a Patreon member, please help support the channel. Start to five bucks a month. I will make it 50 bucks. We've had four of those win so far. So I've given away 200 bucks instead of 100 bucks. So it pays for itself. Now that we got that over with, enough is enough. Let's look at our brisket here. It is looking spectacular, if I do say so myself. The house has been smelling good. Oh yeah, would you look at that. This guy on our board. Let's not waste any of that tallow goodness. Sure, of course it will. This one feels a lot better than the last one. Definitely looks the part. Got that great dark bark that we're looking for, but the last one I could tell pretty early on, it felt a little tender whereas this one feels a little tougher. So I think we're gonna be good. Still got the jiggle we're looking for. So I'm quite happy with what I'm seeing here. Only one way to tell. Looks pretty juicy. Yeah, and the flat's looking good. Nice smoke ring. Why don't we treat ourselves to some bird ends first? Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. Wow. That's good. The bottom was a little crunchy. You can see it tearing down here just a touch. Right near the end, I was getting a little, little impatient. I didn't talk about it in the video, but I cranked up to 300. It was getting late and I was getting exhausted. So that's me, not the, the rest method. Excuse me while I try another one. Cut that a little. Much, much, much better. Cut your pencil width there. Pulls apart. Obviously the point pulls apart pretty easy. Flat pulls apart good. Mm. Flavors there. Bark's good. Much, much better texture than last time. So far we're looking good. It definitely is much improved over last time. Let's take a couple slices out of our point here. Nicely rendered. Mm. Nicely rendered across the whole thing. So I'm pretty happy with that. Just get some tallow on these so I don't lose the other pieces. It's windy out here and they'll oxidize soon. There we go. Uh, but yeah, overall, super happy. Big improvement over last time. Let me just confirm about that. Wow. 
absolutely delicious. Listen, I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. In the last one that I did, it looks like I did not let it cool down enough. If you're gonna do this method and your oven doesn't go below 170, let it rest until at least 160, maybe 150, then put it in your oven and it's not gonna go past 170 again. And it looks like you'll be in pretty good shape. Now, is this better than resting at 150? I don't know. I'm working on a couple options for that soon, so we'll do a comparison for that. If that video interests you, make sure you subscribe. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you soon.